What's going on? Welcome to this episode of the Weekly Wheaties, where we're going to talk about bandwidth. So last episode, I talked about cord cutting, and we mentioned this whole cable internet subscription where you pay a monthly fee and you get access to the internet through a cable provider, satellite, fiber optic, cell phone, things like that. Well, all of those options, when you're looking at the monthly plan, they offer different levels or different tiers of bandwidth, generally measured in megabits per second. They go, I've seen them as low as like five megabits per second, all the way up to one gigabit, which is essentially 1,024 megabits per second. The average runs around 35 to 50, even in the the low hundreds. Um, For instance, in the greater Baton Rouge area, if you have Cox cable, the typical cable subscription packages for just internet are either 35, 50, 100, 150, or 300 megabits per second for the month. And those range from as low as $45 up to $300 a month, for instance. So the question is, well, which package do I need? And this isn't a simple answer, and ultimately it depends. And I hate to say it depends, because if you know me, my favorite answer to any question I ever receive is, it depends. Just this last week or two, I literally had three different people ask me, hey, what laptop should I buy? And I can't answer that because it depends on a few things, which we'll save that for a future episode. But So how much bandwidth do I need? Well, it depends on one, what you're doing, two, how many devices you have in your household that are connecting to the internet, and what are you using those devices for? Or I'm sorry, and what type of devices they are. So for example, a cell phone is going to typically use less bandwidth than a laptop or an Xbox or a PlayStation, but it still connects to the internet. Whereas a smart device like a light bulb or a light switch or even your thermostat still connects to the internet, but is going to use much, much less bandwidth than your cell phone, right? So on average, you could probably assume those, they call them IoT devices, so internet of things, All of those devices, your thermostat, your light switch, light bulbs, anything that, like, not necessarily your your ring doorbell, those types of things, but any very basic device that doesn't have a lot of data going through it. So it's typically just sending and receiving signals. Not anything with video, not any pictures. Those devices are going to generally be like one or two megabits very minimal how much internet usage they're going to use and it's also not connecting to the internet constantly it's only connecting whenever it sends or receives a signal from you as the input so your thermostat typically isn't going to reach out to the internet unless it's seeing you through your phone or another device connect to it and make a change whereas your cameras especially if they're sending video as opposed to just a picture are gonna use a little bit more data, right? So now we're looking at maybe five megabits per second. Your cell phone, probably five to 10. Your laptops, desktops, Xboxes, those are where we're getting into a lot more usage. But it also depends on what you're using them for, right? So if you're streaming video, you can go online and search how much bandwidth does Netflix use? And typically speaking, Netflix is only using 5 to 10 unless you're streaming 4K or something greater, or, um, 8K on, on some devices. But the times you're going to be streaming 4K and 8K is going to be very minimal. And you're really going to have to have a really updated device, whether that's your phone or a 4K Fire Stick, um, put the newer Xboxes, the newer PlayStations. And even then, only certain episodes certain movies certain series are gonna spit out 4k from netflix's end now i'm just using netflix as an example but any streaming service that's going to say we're doing 4k you can go search how much bandwidth they're using so for instance if you live in a household by yourself 
and you have, let's say, one thermostat, one cell phone, one tablet, and a fire stick. You, you, and let's say a laptop. Let's say you have five devices. The chances of you doing something on all five devices is generally going to be pretty low, right? Whereas if you're in a household with two adults and let's say four kids who are all in high school and each of them have a cell phone and a laptop and they're all streaming something and doing FaceTime, for instance, that's going to beef up how much bandwidth you actually need. So your usage, you could typically calculate... Okay, for example, I'm going to be using at most five devices, and at most this is the, the type of thing I'm going to be doing on these five devices. You can do the math and say, all right, I only need 50 megabits total. So that's the plan you could start to look at, because if, if you're paying for something, you're not getting your money's worth, right? You're paying for something you'll never use. Whereas on the other side, you might only be paying for 15 megabits, and you're wondering why you can only stream Netflix and then anytime you try to do something else, the internet slows down. So this gives you an option to actually look at your cable subscriptions and figure out what you're doing is that, and how much bandwidth you're actually going to need. Browsing on TikTok, even though you're browsing and it's strictly videos, right, and you're moving them pretty quick, it's still going to use a ton less bandwidth than 4K and Netflix, right? On the other hand, a lot of these services will show you their download speed versus their upload speed. And download is meaning you're, you are downloading something from the internet. You're streaming something. You're actually going out and trying to get something. If you're pulling up a website, if you're looking at TikTok, if you're looking at Instagram, Facebook, anytime you're accessing information, you're downloading that information. Whereas on the other side is upload speed, if you are putting a video onto YouTube, like I'll be doing with this when it's finished, or if you're doing something where there's a send and receive, typically the main purpose here is going to be gaming. And even with gaming, you're not uploading a ton of information. You're literally just uploading coordinates, if you will, to a server that takes your character and tells other people what your character's doing in the game. So just because gaming takes a lot of bandwidth doesn't always mean you need as much upload as you do download. It also kind of depends on the, the game you're doing. Well, while we're talking about gaming, we also need to talk about wireless versus wired. Because something else that's in this whole streaming world is called latency. And latency is how quick the information gets from your device to the internet. And typically, the lower that number is, well, not typically, always, the lower that number is, the better. And you want a low latency, like typic, uh, anything less than maybe 50 or 100 is going to be generally a good latency speed compared to anything above that. And that might be even high. I mean, most latencies, you're going to see like maybe less than 20. That, that's how they measure that. And if you're doing a Zoom call, or if you're gaming, or anything that, re again, requires that back and forth with somebody, FaceTime, for instance, you're going to want the lowest latency possible. So that's where we get into this, these low numbers that, that, that you need to access. So then the question becomes, okay, well, how do I know how much bandwidth I'm actually getting? How do I know how much latency my device is receiving? And this is where we're going to institute a new piece or a new segment called the App of the Week. And this week I want to highlight, and in this case it's an app, but it's also a website. It's speedtest.net. And what I would suggest is go on your iPhone or your laptop or your iPad or your Xbox, any device you're using to connect to the Internet when you're at home, make sure you're connected to Wi-Fi so like on your phone or your iPad in the top right corner, you'll see the little Wi-Fi symbol. It's the three little lines. Um, and you want to make sure that those have three bars. The cell phone signal are the straight up and down lines. The Wi-Fi are the three curved lines. That indicates how strong of a signal you have to your wireless access point. So just for kicks, go to a different point of your house. Go to speedtest.net. What I suggest do is run it, run it three times and let it see what the average is for where you are. 
try different parts of your house because if you're wondering why it's low in one spot of the house and high in another spot, it could be because you have interference with walls, tip it, oh, other devices, like the microwave is a big issue, Spe specifically when it's turned on. But if you're in between like another device or typically it's a lot of walls, a lot of things in the way, a lot of electrical appliances potentially can cause issues to make your latency go lower. So what we're looking for is high latency, especially when we're doing the, the back and forth. And we're looking to see what our bandwidth usage is. Now, if you have an older device or an older router that can only do 2.4 gigahertz, I don't want to get too technical, you're going to be limited at 100 megabits per second. I've even seen desktops in some friends' houses. They were wondering why their internet speeds were kind of getting lower. And the older Wi-Fi, it, it, they call it the wireless G band, if you will, those can only do up to 100 megabits per second. Some of the older ones can, actually I might be messing up A, B, and G, but one of them caps out at 100 megabits, one of them caps out at 54. So if you know you're paying for more than 54 or 100, but your device is only showing 54 or 100, it could be because your device is outdated or your router, your wireless router is outdated. Or if it's a desktop that you're hardwired into, the network card could be upgraded to get a faster speed. Um, again, for another video, but if you're getting a desktop or a laptop that's capping out at 54 megabits, you just, it's probably so far outdated, you just need to update that and get a newer one. And to be honest, a lot of newer devices actually have faster Wi-Fi cards than network cards in some older devices. Most network cards can go to a gigabit now, which is gonna be 1024 megabits per second. But even then, before laptops and desktops were updated for the wired stuff, even on Xboxes and um, maybe older Playstations, they're, they're all updated now with what's called a gigabit. But if you're finding where you're capped out at 54 or 100 megabits per second, that gives you the opportunity to look into that device or potentially a new router. Now, to know what speed you're paying for, I can't really help with that because you have to look at your provider and go to your website or your app based with that provider and see what speed you're paying for. Another thing is I always suggest at least like a 50% cap or overhead. So if you know you need 50, you want to pay for at least 75, right? Because that's 50% over your 50 that you need. And what that does is just give you some headroom. Should anything ever spurt or kind of spike, if you will, to, to the high um, levels. So it's always a good idea to pay for a little more. And another reason that that could be useful is because in, especially like subdivisions or communities where you're all sharing the, the what I'm going to call the pipe, where what's plumbed into your house, if you're sharing that through the rest of the network, sometimes the levels go up and down and you want some room to adjust for that, right? So if you don't know what bandwidth is, I probably should have mentioned this at the beginning of the video or of the podcast, but bandwidth is, can be compared to an interstate, right? So I'm driving down an interstate right now, and based on how many lanes of traffic and how fast the speed limit is on the interstate, typically dictates how many cars can go on this road. And the more bandwidth you pay for, that's kind of twofold is it makes the, the headroom more, so it gives you more lanes of traffic, but it also is conducive to the speed of the car. So for instance, one lane that can go 100 miles an hour can be equivalent to two lanes that go 50 miles an hour, right? So bandwidth is kind of compared to that in regards to how much traffic versus also the speed because you could have one device that goes 100 megabits per second or two devices that go 50 megabits per second, right? Because they're gonna share that, that pipe. Um, so, if you have any questions about bandwidth or latency, again, this was meant to be very much surface level and kind of just say, well, why is this important to me? Why do I need to know about this? Uh, we talked about cord cutting because of the frugality with pricing. You shouldn't pay for something if you're not using. And I think a lot of 
people are paying for cable subscriptions or internet subscriptions for bandwidth usage that they're not even using or they don't realize why they're paying for, they don't understand that they're paying for a lower level and they're getting a lot of issues with latency and other devices can't connect to the internet and they might not mind paying for a higher per, um, level. So see what you're paying for, see how much you think you might would use, run some tests, and run these tests on Wi-Fi and off Wi-Fi just to compare with your cell phone company. I've seen a lot of people can get higher speeds with their mobile phone plan than they can with Wi-Fi. It's very normal for that to happen because a lot of times the 5G or the 4G LTE, the speeds are in the hundreds and people don't typically pay for 100 megabits per second or multiple of hundreds because you don't need it. Uh, but I would caution you to be careful with the mobile usage for that because once you reach a certain cap, typically the cap's around 25 gigabits for the month in data usage, they start limiting that data cap and it lowers it, or not the data cap, but the bandwidth to where your speed's slow. And they slow a lot, so much so that it's, it's noticeable, right? And while we're talking about data caps, internet companies can also give you data caps so i talked about cox in the greater baton rouge area in louisiana typically speaking if your data cap is going to be one uh, terabyte so a thousand gigabits per month if you reach that they charge you i think maybe fifty dollars for every extra terabyte uh, not terabyte um, 100 gigabytes maybe over that I i've only i don't think i've ever had to pay it um, but I know people who have. So be careful with that. Why, that's another good reason to get these mobile apps is because you can track it. Um, so like I said, any questions, let me know. Check out speedtest.net. I'll post a one minute video just kind of showing the speedtest.net example and what that looks like. So if you have any questions, let me know. If not, catch you next week. Yeah.